Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guess who's back? Back again. Niecy's back. Tell a friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new, my name is Janice. This channel is Faith, Beauty, Fashion, and Lifestyle. Here we are a community where we are called God's Hidden Gem. And through God's grace and by His guidance, God has instructed me to show you guys, to tell you guys how to start living life through God's lens. This is also a community where we promote healing, love, forgiveness, and repeat, and learning the importance of understanding our identity in Christ Jesus. Here you will also have the support and the encouragement you need to step out of your comfort zone and to start living out your calling. Let's get into today's video. So today's video, we are going to talk about how to start living out the life God has for you. We're going to play this intro. We're going to get right into today's video. Okay, so today's video, we are going to talk about how to start living the life that God has for you. This is very important for us to talk about and for us to discuss because sometimes people don't even know where to start or what to do when they want to start living out the things that God is calling them to do. So today I'm here to help you guys, okay? So number one, we have, it will require you to be stripped of all things, mindset, beliefs, idols, and selfishness. So us as Christians, when we come into, when we come into being adopted into the kingdom of God, there is a stripping away, a sanctification process that needs to happen for us to be in the, in the right state of mind and in the right position to receive the thing that God has for us. God is not going to bless us with what he has for us, for us to take it and allow and take it into the world and use it for selfish reasons or his personal gain or anything like this. So the mindsets that you had before Christ has to be stripped away from you. The ideologies that you had before Christ will have to be stripped away from you because it is a part of the sanctification process that is required for all of us. This is a process that we cannot skip, not even myself. Number two, it will require forgiveness. Forgiveness, I've learned a couple of important things about forgiveness. For one, forgiveness is not for the person. Forgiveness is for yourself. Number two, I realized even the Bible says that how can we go to God and ask for forgiveness when we haven't even forgiven our brother? And another thing it says that we have to go make it right with that person before we can even posture ourselves to even ask God for forgiveness. That's how important forgiveness is for God. It's not for, for the person, but it's for us. It's a freeing aspect so that even anything that the person has done to you, you're able to let go and you're able to allow God who is just and righteous execute whatever consequence it is on our behalf. We don't take that upon ourselves for us to just remain in the things that he's calling us to do. And in order for us to have a clear mind, clear conscience, we have to learn how to operate forgiveness. Very, very important. Number three, it will require healing. To have the things that God has for you is going to require healing. In order for us to walk in the fullness of the things that God has for us, we can't go in it with the baggage and the things of yesterday and the past. One thing that I love about God and I admire that I've come to learn, even as I continue my journey with Christ, is that even though God is requiring us to heal, he doesn't just say, okay, you need to heal, get over it, let it go. No, even in the Bible, it says that Jesus comes to us and say, come those who are heavy burdened, those who are heavy laden, come for I will give thee rest. You can cast your heavy burdens on me. I will give you a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light. So it's not like he's, he's instructing us to, to heal and just push passion and be like, all right, you know what? I forgive them. I'm healed. No, he says, I understand this is heavy. I understand things may be hard to let go of, but I'm telling you, give me those hard things. And in return, I will give you something that's more manageable. I will give you something that you can bear. That's very, very important. So healing will be required to start living the life that God has for us. All right. So number four, it will require to accepting lo God's love and then spreading that love to others. So this one may seem like, of course, like, of course, I know God loves me. I know that um, I have to love others because the Bible says 
first and foremost, love the Lord your God with all our heart, mind, and soul. And then secondly, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, the commandments that God has for us. But when you sit back and think about it, and this is something that I even had to reflect in, I had to understand what type of love am I receiving from God when I say, accepting from God when I say that I'm accepting God's love. And I realized through reflection and through time that the love that I was allowing myself to receive from God was conditional. It was, I had to be perfect. I had to have my life together. I had, I had, I had to have all these things done in order for me to actually be able to receive God's love. This is the mindset that I had concerning different things in my life when it came to, when it came to accepting God's love, because the world love comes with terms and conditions. If you hurt me in this way, or you say something to me, or you do this, or you make a mistake, or you do something I don't like, I don't love you anymore. I don't care about you anymore. And I realized like that was the mindset that that I had when it came to God and the love that I thought he was expressing to me. So it wasn't until I was when it wasn't until I was in those moments where I couldn't look myself in the face. I couldn't understand why somebody would love me and all the mistakes that I made, all the trouble that I caused, all the lies that I told, all the vindictive things that I did. How can somebody still love me because the people in the world left me? But it wasn't until I I began to reflect and say, but God, you're still, you still love me in spite of that? You still called me unto yourself in spite of that? You still see me as beauty and all these different characters? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You still see these things? You're still loving me? You're still providing for me and caring for me? Wait, What? And it wasn't until I sat back and realized, oh, this love is different. This love that comes from God is unconditional. The Bible even speaks about it being agape love, the love that we are supposed to give to others. We have to understand what love is in the first place. And if many of you know, as I always say, God has called me to share to others the importance of healing, love, forgiveness, and repeat. Because as we continue this journey with him, as we continue in this life, this is not a one-time thing. You heal once, you forgive once, you love once. No, this is a repetition. It's going to happen constantly. It's going to happen over and over again because it is a part of the process that we must go through to live the life that God is calling us to, li calling us to live. It's very, very important. Have you ever felt simply misunderstood, like you don't fit in or just invisible? I'm here to let you know today that instead of you embracing your ability to stand out, you have now taken on the mindset to fit in. God took me on a journey to learn my identity in Christ Jesus. And along this journey, God took me on a series and sequence of events that showed me the importance to heal, love, forgiveness, and repeat. Also along this journey, God showed me that I was his hidden gem. And that hidden gems are protected and governed by God's grace. God has now given me the responsibility and tasked me with showing others and encouraging them to find their identity and their worth in Christ Jesus. To dust the dirt and the debris off their gems and to recognize their strengths. And to show them the importance of starting to live their lives and encouraging them to live a life through God's lens. God loves you and he wants you healed. So the next thing it is going to require us to trust the process. Nine times out of 10, you will receive a vision of the end results, but you won't understand the necessary steps it's going to take to get to those end results. And that's one thing I'm realizing how God works is he works backwards. He shows us where we will be. And in time, the steps and the, the obedience and the things that we're doing is going to push us to that end result. But it's also going to require us to have faith and to trust God and to know that everything that is happening is getting us to that point. So it's very important for us to also know that we have to trust the process. This is going to require you to have faith. Your faith is going to grow because of this, because as things begin to work out, you will realize, okay, God, I can trust you more and more because I'm not going to lie. We don't always start out trusting God with everything. That's just the truth. And everything with everything, 
But with time, as things are being revealed, with time, as things are working itself out, you begin to like sit back a little bit and be like, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, you know what? I can sit back and relax and allow God to work this thing out on my behalf because guess what? He did it before. He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again and do it again. So it's very, very important for us to understand that we have to trust this process. We may not always have every single step, every single resource, every single idea when we get the vision, but to know and have faith that God will see us through. Very, very important. And the next thing I want to talk to you guys about understanding not to be afraid to mess up, not to be afraid of the attacks that may come, not to be afraid of the people that may not understand you or perceive you. Because one thing I'm learning and what God has shown me is that the thing that God has called you to do, if you remain obedient, those who are tied to the word that God is using you to speak to them are going to come and, and be drawn to you. Not everybody is supposed to be your audience. Not everybody is supposed to sit down and listen to what you have to say. But it's important that you stand firm on the thing that God is calling you to do and understanding that not everybody is going to understand and not everybody is going to receive it. Those who God is calling to you that is drawn by his presence that dwells with you that radiates off of you are going to be the ones that he wants you to speak to. So it's important that you stay focused, that you focus on the task at hand and you reach and you teach and you talk to those souls that God has ordained to come into your life. I want you guys to be encouraged today. I want you guys to understand the importance of allowing God to purify us and sanctify us for the work that he has us to do. Because in this ministry, being in ministry, you're gonna have to have a certain level of tough skin. You're gonna have to understand where and what God is calling you to do. There's a lot of ways that you can get mixed up, misconstrued, you can, fall into other doctrines. You can have all these different things that happen when you have your eyes on what other people are doing, when you have your eyes on how other people are living instead of focusing on what God has you to do and allowing that to build the foundation of which your life is supposed to be on, your ministry, your career, your finances, everything pertaining to this world will be built on that foundation and you will be able to start living that life that God has for you. So I hope you guys are encouraged with this video. That is it. But most importantly, I want you guys to know God loves you. I love you. Most importantly, God wants you healed. Until next time, me see y'all. Peace.